Hey, just a real quick thought on this song. Um, this song came out uh, right as our church was actually going through the book of Daniel. And so there's that line in the verse that talks about worshiping in the lion's den and staring down the giant. And, and there's this concept that my pastor has been pulling out for us, uh, this, this theme, this recurring theme that God did not save Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fire. He did not save Daniel from the lion's den. Um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in the fire. Um, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. Now, a lot of us know the end of the story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, were saved, were protected, and, and brought out by a fourth man in the fire who was Jesus. And uh, God closed the mouths of the lions for Daniel, uh, Daniel, and he was spared. Uh, but the point is, is that often we have to go through the trial. We actually have to walk into the fire or walk into the lion's den. And, you know, that moment for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as they're approaching the flames and not being saved yet by God, and, and Daniel being faithful in prayer no matter what, and being led right into the lion's den and being dropped into the lion's den, and yet still remaining faithful to the Lord, um, still essentially praising from the pit. You know, and that's just an amazing challenge an amazing encouragement that no matter what situation we face, uh, whether we are rescued or not, because even Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, even if we do get thrown into the fire, we will still not bow to the other gods or the other idols. And so there's this, this idea of worship that is, that is everywhere. God, I'm going to worship you when the king has his favor on us and when the king is against us, you know, when our nation is for us and when our nation is against us, when circumstances are good or when circumstances are bad. Um, and so this, this idea of just praise anywhere is a real powerful one. And I think uh, for, for me and my team and my church, what I try to encourage them with often and kind of the reason why we record music and release music is because I want worship to be portable. I want people to have these songs and these anthems that we sing on Sundays and to, for them to echo throughout the week. I just got a text from my mother-in-law actually, and uh, she doesn't listen to a lot of Christian worship music, but she was going through a hard time. And she said a friend sent her some songs that really comforted her. And she was able to connect with God in that moment and asked me for more songs. And I, I think as worship leaders, as people who, you know, play on praise teams a lot, we can forget that songs really do have a ton of power. And that, you know, just sending somebody a song or hearing a song in, in a specific moment uh, that might touch you in a special way is a really, really powerful way to connect to the heart of God in that moment and, and kind of praise God anywhere you are. And so just, just my encouragement to you, if you're on a praise team, if you write songs, whatever, you don't have to write songs, you don't have to release songs, but if you're a part of the worshiping music community, just be encouraged. Your music matters. Like it really, really does matter. And it, and it does help us praise God anywhere, as this song says. Uh, but there's a, there's a verse a, a lot of us may know, uh, Psalm 139, uh, verse 7. It says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I, sh if I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. And, um, and then, it, you know, it goes on. And I love this ending part. And I just want to end with this. It says uh, all the way in verse 23, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I, I love how in this passage, um, the writer David says, just admits that the presence of God, there's nowhere he could go where the presence of God is not there. And, 
and then be then realizing, you know, even in the darkest places, God was there. Even as he was being formed, God was there. And this confidence that, that God is present, that God is loving, that God is kind, that God is shaping us, leads uh, David to be able to say, search me and test me and, and reveal and bring up uh, all the ways that I might be offensive towards you, God. And I'm handing those over to you as an offering so you can shape my life. And that's really worship right there, that moment right there where you tell God, search me, I'll praise you anywhere, I'll go where you want me to go, I'll do what you want me to do, um, I'll, I'll, I'll be known and, and I'll, I'll offer my life to you. That That is really this heart of worship. So just be encouraged. I hope that as you uh, play and sing and lead this song at your church that you're able to uh, you know, encourage your congregations to, to really know how and why God is a God that's deserving of our praise everywhere and anytime. Uh, so uh, thanks for, again, checking out this video. And if you liked it, like it. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you want to check out my Instagram too, that's just, I have some encouraging thoughts that I'll share there. And my website has a blog as well. Just want to connect with you. Just want to encourage you and hope that you're being blessed by these resources and just encouraged in your faith. So until I see it in the next video, have a good one and we'll see you soon.